Isaiah 13, a prophecy against Babylon that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw. Raise a banner on a bare hilltop, shout to them, beckon to them, to enter the gates of the nobles. I have commanded those I prepared for battle, I have summoned my warriors to carry out my wrath, those who rejoice in my triumph. Listen, a noise on the mountains, like that of a great multitude. Listen, an uproar among the kingdoms, like nations massing together. The Lord Almighty is mustering an army for war. They come from faraway lands, from the ends of the heavens, the Lord and the weapons of His wrath to destroy the whole country. Wail, for the day of the Lord is near. It will come like destruction from the Almighty. Because of this all hands will go limp. Every heart will melt with fear. Terror will seize them. Pain and anguish will grip them. They will writhe like a woman in labor. They will look aghast at each other, their faces aflame. See, the day of the Lord is coming, a cruel day with wrath and fierce anger, to make the land desolate and destroy the sinners within it. The stars of heaven and their constellations will not show their light. The rising sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. I will punish the world for its evil, the wicked for their sins. I will put an end to the arrogance of the haughty, and will humble the pride of the ruthless. I will make people scarcer than pure gold, more rare than the gold of Ophir. Therefore I will make the heavens tremble, and the earth will shake from its place at the wrath of the Lord Almighty, in the day of his burning anger. Like a hunted gazelle, like sheep without a shepherd, they will all return to their own people, they will flee to their native land. Whoever is captured will be thrust through, all who are caught will fall by the sword, their infants will be dashed to pieces before their eyes, their houses will be looted, and their wives violated. See, I will stir up against them the Medes, who do not care for silver and have no delight in gold. Their bows will strike down the young men. They will have no mercy on infants, nor will they look with compassion on children. Babylon, the jewel of kingdoms, the pride and glory of the Babylonians, will be overthrown by God, like Sodom and Gomorrah. She will never be inhabited or lived in through all generations. There no nomads will pitch their tents, there no shepherds will rest their flocks, but desert creatures will lie there, jackals will fill her houses, there the owls will dwell, and there the wild goats will leap about, hyenas will inhabit her strongholds, jackals her luxurious palaces, her time is at hand, and her days will not be prolonged. Isaiah 14 The Lord will have compassion on Jacob. Once again he will choose Israel and will settle them in their own land. Foreigners will join them and unite with the descendants of Jacob. Nations will take them and bring them to their own place. And Israel will take possession of the nations and make them male and female servants in the Lord's land. They will make captives of their captors and rule over their oppressors. On the day the Lord gives you relief from your suffering and turmoil and from the harsh labor forced on you, you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon, how the oppressor has come to an end, how his fury has ended. The Lord has broken the rod of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers, which in anger struck down peoples with unceasing blows and in fury subdued nations with relentless aggression. All the lands are at rest and at peace. They break into singing. Even the junipers and the cedars of Lebanon gloat over you and say, Now that you have been laid low, no one comes to cut us down. The realm of the dead below is all astir, to meet you at your coming. It rouses the spirits of the departed to greet you. All those who are leaders in the world... It makes them rise from their thrones, all those who are kings over the nations. They will all respond. They will say to you, You also have become weak as we are. You have become like us. All your pomp has been brought down to the grave, along with the noise of your harps. Maggots are spread out beneath you and worms cover you. 
how you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens, I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. Those who see you stare at you, they ponder your fate. Is this the man who shook the earth and made kingdoms tremble, the man who made the world a wilderness, who overthrew its cities and would not let his captives go home? All the kings of the nations lie in state, each in his own tomb. But you are cast out of your tomb like a rejected branch. You are covered with the slain, with those pierced by the sword, those who descend to the stones of the pit, like a corpse trampled underfoot. You will not join them in burial, for you have destroyed your land and killed your people. Let the offspring of the wicked never be mentioned again. Prepare a place to slaughter his children for the sins of their ancestors. They are not to rise to inherit the land and cover the earth with their cities. I will rise up against them, declares the Lord Almighty. I will wipe out Babylon's name and survivors, her offspring and descendants, declares the Lord. I will turn her into a place for owls and into swampland. I will sweep her with the broom of destruction, declares the Lord Almighty. The Lord Almighty has sworn, Surely as I have planned, so it will be, and as I have purposed, so it will happen. I will crush the Assyrian in my land. On my mountains I will trample him down. His yoke will be taken from my people, and his burden removed from their shoulders. This is the plan determined for the whole world. This is the hand stretched out over all nations. For the Lord Almighty has purposed, and who can thwart him? His hand is stretched out, and who can turn it back? This prophecy came in the year King Ahaz died. Do not rejoice, all you Philistines, that the rod that struck you is broken. From the root of that snake will spring up a viper. Its fruit will be a darting, venomous serpent. The poorest of the poor will find pasture, and the needy will lie down in safety. But your root I will destroy by famine. It will slay your survivors. Well, you gate, howl, you city. Melt away, all you Philistines. A cloud of smoke comes from the north, and there's not a straggler in its ranks. What answer shall be given to the envoys of that nation? The Lord has established Zion, and in her his afflicted people will find refuge. Isaiah 15 A Prophecy Against Moab Ar in Moab is ruined, destroyed in a night. Ker in Moab is ruined, destroyed in a night. Diban goes up to its temple, to its high places to weep. Moab wails over Nebo and Medaba. Every head is shaved, and every beard cut off. In the streets they wear sackcloth. On the roofs and in the public squares they all wail, prostrate with weeping. Heshbon and Elialeh cry out, their voices are heard all the way to Jahaz. Therefore the armed men of Moab cry out, and their hearts are faint. My heart cries out over Moab. Her fugitives flee as far as Zoar, as far as Eglath Shalishia. They go up the hill to Luhith, weeping as they go. On the road to Horonaim they lament their destruction. The waters of Nimrim are dried up, and the grass is withered. The vegetation is gone, and nothing green is left. So the wealth they have acquired and stored up they carry away over the ravine of the poplars. Their outcry echoes along the border of Moab. Their wailing reaches as far as Eglaim. Their lamentation as far as Beer Elim. The waters of Demon are full of blood, but I will bring still more upon Demon a lion upon the fugitives of Moab and upon those who remain in the land. Isaiah 16 Send lambs as tribute to the ruler of the land, from Sela across the desert to the mount of Dortazan. 
like fluttering birds pushed from the nest, so are the women of Moab at the fords of the Arnon. Make up your mind, Moab says, render a decision. Make your shadow like night at high noon, hide the fugitives, do not betray the refugees. Let the Moabite fugitives stay with you, be their shelter from the destroyer. The oppressor will come to an end, and destruction will cease, the aggressor will vanish from the land, in love a throne will be established, in faithfulness a man will sit on it, one from the house of David, one who in judging seeks justice and speeds the cause of righteousness. We have heard of Moab's pride, how great is her arrogance, of her conceit, her pride, and her insolence. But her boasts are empty. Therefore the Moabites wail. They wail together for Moab, lament and grieve for the raisin cakes of Ker Haraseth, the fields of Heshbon wither, the vines of Sibma also. The rulers of the nations have trampled down the choicest vines which once reached Jazer and spread toward the desert. Their shoots spread out and went as far as the sea. So I weep as Jazer weeps for the vines of Sibma, Heshbon and Eliale. I drench you with tears. The shouts of joy over your ripened fruit and over your harvests have been stilled. Joy and gladness are taken away from the orchards. No one sings or shouts in the vineyards. No one treads out wine at the presses. For I have put an end to the shouting. My heart laments for Moab like a harp. My inmost being for Ker Haraseth. When Moab appears at her high place, she only wears herself out. When she goes to her shrine to pray, it is to no avail. This is the word the Lord has already spoken concerning Moab. But now the Lord says, Within three years, as a servant bound by contract would count them, Moab's splendor and all her many people will be despised, and her survivors will be very few and feeble. Isaiah 17 A Prophecy Against Damascus See, Damascus will no longer be a city, but will become a heap of ruins. The cities of Aroer will be deserted and left to flocks which will lie down, with no one to make them afraid. The fortified city will disappear from Ephraim and royal power from Damascus. The remnant of Aram will be like the glory of the Israelites, declares the Lord Almighty. In that day the glory of Jacob will fade, the fat of his body will waste away. It will be as when reapers harvest the standing grain, gathering the grain in their arms, as when someone gleans heads of grain in the valley of Rephaim. Yet some gleanings will remain, as when an olive tree is beaten, leaving two or three olives on the topmost branches, four or five on the fruitful boughs, declares the Lord, the God of Israel. In that day people will look to their Maker and turn their eyes to the Holy One of Israel. They will not look to the altars, the work of their hands, and they will have no regard for the Asherah poles and the incense altars their fingers have made. In that day their strong cities, which they left because of the Israelites, will be like places abandoned to thickets and undergrowth, and all will be desolation. You have forgotten God your Savior. You have not remembered the rock your fortress. Therefore, though you set out the finest plants and plant imported vines, though on the day you set them out you make them grow, and on the morning when you plant them you bring them to bud, yet the harvest will be as nothing in the day of disease and incurable pain. Woe to the many nations that rage, they rage like the raging sea. Woe to the peoples who roar, they roar like the roaring of great waters. Although the peoples roar like the roar of surging waters, when he rebukes them they flee far away, driven before the wind like chaff on the hills, like tumbleweed before a gale. In the evening, sudden terror. Before the morning they are gone. This is the portion of those who loot us, the lot of those who plunder us.